Right, welcome to the guide on setting up a baseline uh, in speed density. This is uh, to get you close on the math, but it isn't meant to uh, actually tune the math. Uh, but this is uh, just a starting point, so we're going to go ahead and go through the tune setup checklist, scanner setup, and then uh, we're going to apply the changes. All right, so I'm just throwing in a quick uh, speed density checklist to make sure that the following tables and settings are set accordingly uh, to ensure that our uh, math baseline is going to look okay um, when we plot the numbers in the scanner. So first off, uh, we want the map to still be failed, um, set to zero. Uh, DTC should still be set to a mil on first error. You can leave the light off, of course. Um, closed loop enable temp should still be 284 degrees. Uh, LTFT should still be disabled. Uh, open loop key ratio should be one. And uh, that's an operating temp range at a minimum, uh, 140 or up, or you can one out the whole table. Uh, cat over temp is uh, still disabled. DFCO is still disabled as well. Um, enable temp being set at 284. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, just a quick uh, run through, um, making sure that we're still in speed density and also make sure that your map is plugged in, otherwise none of this is going to work at the end of the day. Um, so we're just going to jump right into it here uh, and uh, what that looks like real fast through, this, through the tune. Alright, so we're just going to breeze through the checklist real quick. Uh, so first we're going to go to engine diagnostics, we're going to check on our uh, fail freak and that's still set to zero, it's under the airflow tab. Um, so here we got map mass airflow sensor, zero hertz, uh, so we go to DCCs. Um, mill on first air is still set on the P101, 102, and 103. SES is uh, service engine light is still off. Um, you can turn that on if you'd like. Next we head over to the engine. Um, we go to fueling tab, click on this. And under oxygen sensors, we click here. Um, we make sure our closed loop enable is still set to 284. It is. That's your short term fuel trims if you uh, didn't know. Long-term fuel trims are also uh, disabled. We want to leave those off as well. Uh, next thing, we go to open loop base. Um, we go ahead to uh, open loop EQ ratio. Make sure that it's uh, 140 and up at a minimum is set to one, uh, or the whole table is one, either one. Uh, we go down to short-term uh, fuel trim open loop. Should still be, be disabled. Um, that should remain disabled. Come over to uh, temperature control, which is your catalyst uh, protection, is your cat over temp. We leave that disabled. Uh, got cut cut off DFCO. Um, this is uh, your deceleration fuel cutoff should still be set to 284, and that's it for uh, speed density checklist. Uh, that should be everything we need to have off and uh, set to make sure we get uh, proper numbers for our math baseline while in speed density. All right, so before we're getting into uh, plotting numbers for your math baseline, we're going to make sure our VE table looks like something like this. It should be within 5% and smooth. Um, if it does not look like this, uh, I'll throw in another example of what it shouldn't look like. If it looks like this, uh, go ahead and continue working on your VE. Um, you're going to want to keep smoothing that out. Uh, you should have smoothed this during the tuning process, uh, but if it looks like this, uh, this is not going to work very well. Jumping into scanner setup now, uh, the required channels we're going to need for this is a uh, map frequency and dynamic airflow. i um, show you how to get those and build the table here shortly. I still have a vehicle default list up right now, um, but we need to add a few other things uh, to make sure that we get the proper numbers we need. So we're going to go ahead and click add channel, type in dynamic, and we need to log this if you aren't already. And then we're also going to need to add the mass airflow frequency. Um, this will work in speed density, it will actually uh, plot along the uh, frequency uh, range. Now what we don't need, uh, we can go ahead and remove and add whatever else we need, but for now we're just going to talk about these two. Um, and we'll move in right into how to uh, plot this and get a log and everything and uh, actually how to use this. Okay, next we need to build a table to use the numbers we're going to get from dynamic airflow and plot them along our mass airflow sensor frequencies. So first we go to uh, over here and we just, anywhere, click right click and we hit grass layout. Um, we go ahead and add table. Uh, we name this math dynamic or whatever you so choose. Um, we go to parameter. We're going to use dynamic. We're going to leave it in grams per second. Um, we'll leave two decimals. Filters not required. Uh, we're going to set a relatively high number for cell hits. So uh, we'll set 50. Uh, should be fine. Go down to column axis. Uh, we know this needs to be frequency. Uh, we're logging that channel over here, the mass airflow frequency. So we go ahead and use, just type in mass and it'll pop up here. Select frequency, use a generic is fine. Um, now we actually need the values, so I'll go over to the tune. We go to engine, click on airflow, and under general, uh, we're going to have map calibration. We hit airflow versus frequency. Click on that. 
Uh, right click the box on the top left, column axis, copy labels, back to the scanner, right click, paste, and there we go. Now we have our uh, our uh, dynamic airflow plotted along the frequency. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and see what that looks like uh, as far as applying this into the tune. Alright, so now after a good long drive and a uh, smooth pedal transitions, etc., um, we've got some dynamic airflow numbers to go ahead and plug into our math table. Uh, note again, these are still in grams per second, so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, plug these into our math table now. Uh, we got a good amount of numbers, so we're going to go ahead and select the first one. And we'll scroll all the way over to the last one, uh, which looks like 9,000. Uh, we'll highlight the entire thing by hitting shift and click. And again, from that's from 2000, so we'll go ahead and copy. And then we're going to come over to the tune. In the tune, we'll go to our math cal, and uh, we start, that number started right at 2000, so we'll go ahead and click that cell. Right click, and we'll paste those in. And there we go, we got, uh, and again, uh, noting that it's in grams per second. If it, uh, I'll go ahead and undo that, show what it will look like if it's in some other number. If it's pounds per hour, it will still copy. Uh, it'll still copy the grams per second in, which is massively wrong, as you see. So you got to make sure that you're in the right unit. So we'll go ahead and do that and go back to grams per second, like we were. Just want to demonstrate that real quick, uh, how important it is to be in the same units. Uh, so here we go. Back 2000, plug those numbers in, paste them straight in. Not using paste special, just straight paste. And here we go. Uh, so now we have dynamic airflow values plugged in on a stock math tune. Uh, so this is stock numbers. Um, and now we see how that changed the uh, amount. So uh, clearly we're getting more airflow. So now from here, from the end, I like to what I like to do is go ahead and interpolate all the way out to the end, um, just by selecting the last number and hitting interpolate selection, just to kind of flatten it out. And if you want to add some more fuel to be safe on the safe side, in case you do get up into these numbers, you go ahead on top, and we add in about one twenty percent by hitting one point two. We'll set, add that in and then uh, reinterpolate that that again uh, starting here and interpolate or smooth so something like that uh, that that will look just fine uh, so that that kind of carries it on out to the wide open throttle area um, in all honesty most of the time you're not going to be able to hit these frequencies anyway um, but that uh that pretty much uh, takes care of that section so we come on back down to the 6,000 area as we see here and about there we see a little bit of a uh, little bit of trouble, um, so we're going to go ahead and smooth this area out. Um, I'd like to see it a little bit cleaner line, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just smooth selection. I click in once, maybe twice, and I uh, should smooth it out. Don't use to interpolate for these areas; just only s the smooth selection function. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now we have dynamic airflow values plotted along our frequencies, which uh, will also account for your wide open throttle. Um, as well because it's dynamic airflow will be logged regardless uh, so that gets you a good decent starting point or somewhere to begin tuning your math in a safe manner that's going to be fairly close to what it should be um, provided that your VE table is correct uh, so this still needs to be retuned uh, using uh, other methods uh, the wideband and or uh, short-term fuel trims uh, but for now that will give you a starting point um, and that's uh, that's all we want. So uh, from here we go ahead and move into uh, tuning the math. That'll be the the next video. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, next up, we're going to cover tuning the math. Uh, we'll cover both methods: short-term fuel trims and wideband uh, use. Um, either one. Uh, so we'll go into that. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them below in the comments. Uh, hit like and subscribe uh, as well. And uh, I will see you out there.